Hi guys, and welcome back. You've probably seen some ordinary concentrated nitric acid before. It's a colorless liquid that gives off a little bit of fumes. But today we will find out what is nearly 100% nitric acid like and we'll explore some of its unique properties. Most of the nitric acid used in the lab is usually the concentrated 68% nitric acid, which works fine for most of the applications where it's needed. But it can be more concentrated too. This type of acid is normally called fuming nitric acid because it gives off a quite more fumes than the more dilute acid does. The fuming stuff is also an incredibly strong oxidizer, and it can ignite many organic materials such as solvents or even lab gloves. It's mostly used where the more dilute acid wouldn't work such as for making certain explosives. So anyway, let's firstly make some fuming nitric acid and then we'll conduct some experiments with it. To make it, we are going to need some potassium nitrate and some sulfuric acid. Firstly, I added 100 grams of nitrate to a flask. And then I measured out 80 mils of sulfuric acid. I then proceeded to add it while stirring. We can immediately see the fumes of nitric acid in the flask. I then added 120 grams more nitrate and additional 40 mils of sulfuric acid. The last step was to set it up for a distillation and start to distill the fuming nitric acid. Okay, so now the distillation has nearly finished and we can collect our product. The fuming nitric acid is pale yellow because of all the nitrogen oxides dissolved in it. Those can be removed by passing dry air or better an inert gas such as argon or nitrogen through it. But for most synthesis, it doesn't matter except some. Fuming nitric acid with oxides in it is commonly referred as red fuming nitric acid or RFNA for short and the one without oxides is called white fuming nitric acid. 
I then stored it in a brown glass bottle to protect it from light. Finally, let's do some reactions with it. Being an extremely strong oxidizer, it should ignite many things. On this channel, I already showed some hypergolic reactions with some strong oxidizers, with some organic compounds, for example, with aniline. N-methylmorpholine. isopropyl nitrite, and others. But today we will try some other things, starting with lactose. Upon addition, nothing really happened, so I waited a bit and then added some water. Immediately a white precipitate formed. I think that it could be mucic acid because it forms when galactose and its derivates including lactose are oxidized by nitric acid. It's virtually insoluble in water though, so it precipitates out as a white solid. What else do you think it could be? Write your guesses in the comments. Okay, moving on to the next experiment. This time with sulfur. Immediately upon addition, a whole lot of red nitrogen dioxide was formed and the reaction was quite vigorous. I think that the products of this reaction were mostly sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and water, as well as some sulfuric acid. But I was very surprised with the fact that the reaction was so vigorous. Next was the reaction with titanium powder. Where the acid hit the titanium, nothing happened, due to an effect called passivation, in which the protective salt layer protects the metal from further attack from the acid. Or maybe because the titanium is already pretty corrosive resistant. Up next, we have reaction with tert butyl chloride, which was made ourselves. It just turned green and began to boil. If you have any ideas about what could be the products of this reaction, feel free to write in the comments. The next reaction is a bit different. It's a reaction between some bleach and fuming nitric acid. It produced a whole lot of chlorine and sodium nitrate. Next, reaction with glycerine. I was quite excited that it would make a lot of nitroglycerine, which is a very powerful explosive. 
I was also very scared that the reaction would be very vigorous and that it would turn into a runaway reaction, but it turned out fine. I burned some off camera, but it didn't do anything. An interesting reaction happened between acetanilide, which we also made ourselves and with the fuming nitric acid. Again, if you have any ideas about the reaction products, feel free to tell in the comments. The resulting solution looked exactly like old clumpy blood. As previously said, it's an extremely strong oxidizer in a part igniting things. It can torn them apart too. Have a look at what it does to a dandelion plant leaf. The leaf immediately turns brown and starts to disintegrate. It's quite terrifying to watch. And the last reaction is very special. It is reaction with hexamine. It's a very energy dense compound and it burns when ignited. That is the reason that it can be found in camping fuel. This reaction when carried out with white fuming nitric acid produces an extremely powerful but rather insensitive explosive RDX. But if we don't cool the reaction and use RFNA, we get this result. it ignited with a loud noise. After the reaction calmed down, there was some tar at the bottom of the test tube. I scraped it out and tried to light it. It wasn't super visible, but it burned quickly and with a pale yellow flame. Who knows, maybe there was some RDX in there along with the tar. Anyway, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, feel free to drop a like or subscribe. Bye.